You are listening to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast, where we are vigorously equipping men to pursue biblical manliness. This is our midweek, a quiet life podcast that focuses on living a quiet life, mind your own affairs, work with your hands, and be dependent upon nobody. For more information, visit us at thepursuitofmanliness.com. So over the last handful of days, I have uh, spent my time inside, really for the last week plus, it feels like. And then, of course, we went through Thanksgiving and stuff. But inside, sitting down, eating delicious food, and watching the World Cup. We are not every four year uh, soccer, football, whatever you call it, fans. We are we are soccer fans. So when the World Cup comes around, it's a big deal. Like on Monday, kept two of my kids out of school because they wanted to watch a match, and said absolutely. When I got to the school, the secretary said, "Did they have an appointment or something?" And I said, uh, "International business. That's what we had to do." So uh, we love the World Cup. Um, I. I had, you know, I, I let people know, hey, when it's when it happens, and normally it happens in the summertime, um, you know, I'm kind of, that's that's where I'm at. It's, it's a big deal. We enjoy it. Uh, that's just, soccer's been a part of our family uh, for, well, since I met my wife, uh, to be honest. So uh, with all that said, I, I realized today, today is a Monday. You're listening to this or watching this on a Wednesday, but on Monday, I thought, you know what? You need to get up. You need to get moving. So I had, I'd got my gear together, um, you know, my backpack, water, Bible, uh, camera, batteries charged. I was gonna record some video stuff for Pursue Wilderness. I hadn't, I hadn't had anything new for a little while, so I thought, you know, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna record something that I that I can post, I can share, and. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you check that out. Pursue Wilderness. It's on Facebook, but more active on Instagram. And and uh, tag tag us. The, the, it's just the idea is to, to get outside, get moving. And so I got my gear together. Uh, had shot a little bit of, I, I guess you call it B roll, uh, but to get going. Got to where I was going to go, and I'd never seen this before. The gate was closed, and it says. Uh, it's closed. I didn't know. You, I guess I didn't realize you could close a state park. I've never seen that park closed in any weather. So it's a little cool today, but I, the weather has nothing to do with it. I, I've been out there when it has been just freezing cold, snow, ice, whatever, uh, always open. So I, I don't know if something transpired back there. I don't, I don't know what happened, but um, normally this time of year it's free too. So it's not that they don't have anyone at the gate that I'm aware of, and it was closed. And so I thought, are you kidding me? I, you know, I get – you know, I kind of block out some time. I drive there. I've, I've shot the B-roll. Uh, I want to get some some video for uh, for for pursue wilderness. And now what? Like I think I might have actually said that. Now what? As I turned and I started to, to think, okay, like where else could I go? I like I don't have a lot of trails around me that I know of. There's one that I know, of, but I think it goes downtown. I'm not doing that. And I thought, well, you, you could walk the neighborhood. Well, let's be honest. Walking some trails and getting dirt under your shoes and, and and getting out and all that and and getting some video for Pursue Wilderness, uh, it's just not as enticing walking around the neighborhood where there's constantly cars, Canadian geese, um, you know, sounds. Whatever. I mean, it's just I'm thought I don't want to do this. So I, I I get here and I start to do. I have like a kind of a, a route that I do my own trail. Uh, when I walk here, I started to do it. I thought, I don't want to do this. Like this is lame. And I got to the part where I round, I do a kind of a turn, and I go, and I got, I looked at my watch. And it was point six eight miles, and I thought, I'm going home. This is lame. I don't want to do this. And I just kept going. And I'm, I, I, I don't do like 15 miles. Okay, I'm, I'm about a three mile guy, five mile guy. Maybe more, depending on what I'm doing or where I'm at or what I'm seeing. Uh, but I got flat feet, so I'm not, I'm not doing no 15 miles uh, unless I'm in a car. Uh, so for me, three is average. I thought I don't think I got three in me, but I just I just kept going. And I got to be honest, I had a really really crummy attitude, and I thought 
this is lame. This is really, this is lame. And I'm full, full disclosure. And this is the, the point of what I'm going to talk about on this quiet life podcast. When things don't go my way, I don't always have the best attitude. When plans change, sometimes I don't handle that real well. I'll give you an example. My wife is a phenomenal cook. She can make anything. I can make nothing. So from a good meal standpoint, I'm fairly dependent upon her, unless it's on a grill. And even that, she, she, she is really good on the grill. She comes from a family who's really good with food, which is one of the reasons why I was sitting aside eating delicious food you know, the last few days as well. And so if she says, like let's say in the morning, hey, we're going to have, you know, hash tonight, love hash, or we're going to have roast tonight, or we're going to have, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever comes up, you know, we're going to have whatever. I got to be honest, like I think about that several times throughout the day. Oh yeah, I'm going to get home. I'm going to get home and the the house is going to smell like this or, you know, or I wonder if we'll have this. Oh, if she makes enough, I'll have leftovers tomorrow. Like I do. I just, I think about it. If I get home and I realize uh, where's the hash? I I don't see any hamburger. I don't see any like. There's no crock pot. Like w- w- what happened? That can be a bit of a, a setback for me. Um, and I don't get angry or nothing. I don't want to say that, but I'm like, oh. again, if I'm gonna be real honest with you, when these things happen, it feels like my pride takes a bit of a hit. I don't think I'm alone in this. So. As I'm walking today, uh, sometimes I'll walk and I'll have my my AirPods on, but not on. I mean, they're in, but not on. That's what, how I should say it. Like I'll have them, but I'm not really listening to anything. I just have them in case I want to listen to something or if I, if I need to, you know, send a message or whatever. And sometimes I listen to stuff, but but I always have the always have the the AirPods. And today I had them in, but not on. And I just I, I felt that that stirring that. This was something I was going to share with you. I hadn't planned out what the the, the Quiet Life podcast was going to be for this week, but it just it was it was very humbling that it was a pride issue. My plans changed. I was I was I was set on doing what I was going to do, and I had all this this idea, and 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 and, and it didn't pan out. And I was kind of I wasn't pouting, but I wasn't real fired up about what I was going to do. I thought, well, are you a man of your word or not? If you say you just need to get moving, you just need to get outside, it's better for you to be outside than inside, <clears throat> then you might want to give that a go. And you might want to do it even though it isn't glamorous or, uh, I don't know what the right word is, very appealing on social media or video. I mean, no one wants to see me walking through my neighborhood, but you want to see some nature. At least I do. I'd rather see nature than my neighborhood. And I thought this, maybe this ain't about that. Maybe this ain't about all the the stuff that you shot. Because I thought, well, that stuff's worthless now. Because I to do it again. Ain't gonna, it ain't going to be the same. And so, and I just kept thinking about that because earlier today I was writing in my my uh, journal. If that's what you call it. I don't really call it a journal, but like a moleskin notebook. Okay, I'm writing in my notebook, and I'm writing down uh, something uh, from first, Second Samuel chapter twenty three today. And and as I'm writing it down, I'm talking about, you know, tomorrow is another opportunity. And then I put comma, Lord willing, comma. And I know what scripture says, if the Lord wills. And I'm not one of those guys that you say, hey, I'll see you tomorrow. And I don't go, Lord willing. Uh, Some guys feel the need to do that. That's not my thing. I mean, I I, I get Lord willing. I want you to understand that if that bothered you. But um, I'm not one of those guys that have to Lord willing everything. I just assume it's the Lord willing. And I wrote that down and I kind of thought about that as I was walking. Lord willing, well. It wasn't in the cards today to go to that place and do whatever you thought you're going to do. And then I thought, well, I'll just I'll just go back inside and watch the World Cup, watch Brazil thump whoever they're going to thump or whatever. Because I will watch the matches that I missed and certain ones I don't miss. Um, but I thought, no, if you if you're if you're going to say one thing, then you need to do that thing as well. And I want—I just need to get moving. And I 
consider Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Did the Lord have something he needed to teach me or wanted to teach me today by not going to where I was going to go? Maybe, maybe not. Here's what I know. Experience in life is not cheap, and oftentimes it cultivates your character, good or bad. Okay? So experience isn't cheap. If you start something new, you're going to have to cut your teeth. You're going to have to spend some money. You're going to you're going to have to like have skin in the game. You're you're going to have to to devote extra time or whatever, you know, whatever it is. And like my wife was talking to someone the other day about hunting. Guys will say, "Do you go hunting?" No. Well, why not? I I don't feel like I have time. I have two full-time jobs and and kids. And I have some friends who are hunters, and every once in a while I can get some meat there. But I don't. And she was saying, like, well, you know, if you had more time. And I'm like, well, yeah, if I didn't podcast three times a week and pursue manliness, pursue wilderness, the herd, tribe, those things, yeah, there would be a lot more opportunity. And this is not this is not victimhood, okay? I hope, I hope you understand that. What I'm saying is experience isn't cheap. So for me, I'll sacrifice something that I wanted to learn or was learning or am, and, and, you know, admire for something I think right now, this is where God's, what God's called me to do. I think this is what God's calling me to do. So experience isn't cheap. So if you say, hey, I want to start, I want to just know it's going to cost you something. And one of the things that costs you is your pride because your pride is going to take a hit. Man, I've created things with pursuit of manliness that have been just a major flop. I think a major flop. I've done things, even things right now that I'm like, well, that didn't go quite the way that I thought it was going to go. Every once in a while, I'll create something or I'll, I'll, I'll buy some gear or I'll come up with a thing. And I, and in my mind, I'll think, hey, the guys are going to like this. I think the guys are really going to dig this. And then you, then they, then they don't. And you're like, okay, well, swing and a miss. Okay, well, then let's change that. Or let's never do that again. Or maybe that happened because I've lost focus on what should happen. So experience isn't cheap, and often it cultivates your character. And I think that's good or bad. We often assume that the the cultivation of our character is always good. It's not. Some of you, like me, when plans don't go your way, your pride takes a hit. Or if we're willing to say it another way, you get your feelings hurt. Some people can bounce back from that pretty quickly. I feel I feel like for me, I have a window of time like, man, that 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 did not go the way I thought it was going to go, depending on what it is. Now, granted, God canceling my little trip out to the the trails today in comparison to you know, a job loss, a house fire, um, an illness, uh, you know, a move or whatever. I, I understand those are major things. And, 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 and some of those things I've gone through and some of them I haven't. What I'm saying is it's almost like some, some guys don't bounce back from that. You get your feelings hurt. You would never say that. You would say it the way maybe I said it. Your pride took a hit or you're, dis- you're disappointed or whatever, frustrated, angry, whatever. And it, it the, the recovery time is is, is nil. It, it just doesn't. You just don't recover from it. And what happens is, is a root of bitterness will kind of take hold, and then it affects a lot of people. And and then you have different problems. You're you're going to be disappointed. You went to your restaurant, your favorite restaurant, and you couldn't wait to order a certain thing off the menu. And they don't have. You're like, oh man, now what am I going to do? That's different than a guy who goes in and he pouts and he slams the door and he's yelling at people and he won't answer the phone or he doesn't respond to a text or he doesn't respond to email. That's radically different. And I I hope that you know that. And I think most of you do, but some guys don't. Some guys, when they get their feelings hurt, they will just utterly disappear. They'll shun you. Uh, they'll shun whatever the thing is that, that has, that has hurt their feelings. When I say experience isn't cheap, and often it cultivates your character. We need to realize here, our character is constantly being cultivated. It's like when God took Israel across that desert floor, there was something to be learned there. There was a shorter way. He said, no, that ain't going to work. You're not ready for that. 
There are things in our life that we're simply just not ready for. And so sometimes God takes you a longer way, or sometimes he alters your plans greatly. And if you're willing, you can learn quite a bit in that season or in that moment or in that decision. You can learn quite a bit. In, in, you know, A friend of mine talks about a razor-thin moment. Tim Scott, razor, life is full of razor thin moments. Those razor thin moments, you know that that little bitty decision, that little that 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 very quick, minute moment. Instead of you going back to what you've always done, or instead of you going to your default answers or your, you know, the thing that you're most comfortable with, if you choose to do what is right, if you choose to do what is best, your character just moved the right direction. You do that with those razor thin moments throughout the day, week, month, year. I'll tell you right now, this, the growth would be substantial. And I'm learning that the last number of years that my response mechanism to things that don't go my way is not always very good and it does affect other people. Sometimes when things don't go my way, I, I don't necessarily want it to affect other people. I don't need to let my wife know every time something didn't go my way. Or my kids know that I had a bad day. Like they don't need to carry that emotional burden. There, there does need to be people in your life that do need to know that. And again, I, I'm, I'm overly exaggerating a change of plans. But as I thought about that today, and I thought about myself first and foremost, that, uh, Jarrett, sometimes you can be a bit of a baby. Sometimes you can throw yourself a bit of a, a pity party. Sometimes your default mechanism is to then do nothing. Uh, that ain't good. And you can keep doing that for the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, you will be a miserable person to be around because people will know that if they're around you and things don't go your way, uh, they will feel it. And they might even hear it. You know, it's like when you're, you know, for us, like if we're trying to leave town, we live in a big city, we're trying to leave town and we got to get on this 465 good night. Um, and so does everybody else in the city at the same time. And so you think, I'm going to this place, it's going to take me two, two and a half hours. Well, after you get through 465, uh, you might be looking at quite a bit more time. Or you might think, well, I didn't have to use the restroom now, but now I do. Or you think, I don't smoke, but phew, I could use a cigarette after that. By the way, I don't smoke for you guys that are wondering. It's just stressful. And you think, why did we not leave earlier? I wanted to leave at 1. Why did we have to leave at 2.30? Why could we not have done it? And all of a sudden, all the things start brewing, and nothing good comes from that. What I'm saying is you're going to have to keep your emotions in check because sometimes your emotions lie to you. Sometimes your heart isn't accurate. And though you might be disappointed, though you might be bummed out, um, you'll be okay. And I say that because we need to be mindful of how we are responding the things that don't go away. As I'm walking and I'm getting ready to wind down uh, my, my, my walk through the neighborhood today, I got this alert from the Premier League. I told you we're, we are soccer fans. Um, it says rearrangement of matches confirmed for January and February. Now, the World Cup's in a weird time this year. There's some things moving around. Um, there were some announcements that were postponed in September, October, and here's the new dates. Okay. No big deal, right? So what? It does not affect me. I know that. I will not be at these matches or have ever been to a Premier League match. However, let's imagine back in October, it was your kid's birthday, and you bought them tickets. Because I know two of the matches or two of the teams are Man City and Arsenal. You guys know Premier League. That's a big deal. They're at the top of the table. Uh, they will more than likely be at one and two the whole season, we think. If you bought your kid tickets to go across the pond – to watch Man City or Arsenal, Man City and Arsenal play each other, or just go to a game, and those games got postponed for whatever reason. I don't recall what the reasons are, but if they got pro postponed, and now you find that they're in February, and let's say you can't go now, let's say there's just logistically you can't make it, you work, school, vacation time, airline tickets, whatever. Boy, that's a hit. <laughs> Here you had perhaps this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see two incredible clubs play, and now you can't go. That's a hit. Uh, there, there's a thing that my daughter's going to go to this summer. She's her, her and her mom are going this thing this summer. And 
her and some friends or something scored tickets to Taylor Swift. I don't think we've ever played a Taylor Swift song in our house, but all of a sudden that became the highest priority for a period of time. And uh, they're going somewhere to see Taylor Swift do whatever she does. Well, that plan to go see Taylor Swift ruins the plan that I had made about, I don't know, 11 months, not quite that long, eight months earlier. Scratch that plan. Because we're going to go, we're not we, someone's going to go listen to Taylor Swift sing songs. Boom. That's a, that can be a tough one because my plan was for the whole family. Wife and kids, they're all going to be in on it. No, that, that ain't going to happen now because we plans change. Listen, to me, that's the reality of life. Plans change. Things are going to change. Things are not going to go your way. Small things, big things, regardless, keep in mind, God is good. He is sovereign. He is establishing your steps. Perhaps he's keeping you from something that wasn't good. Perhaps he has a better plan in mind. If I sulk, sit, and sour, nothing good is ever going to come from that. Nothing good is ever going to come from that. There's nothing wrong with being disappointed. There's nothing wrong with being frustrated. There's nothing wrong with saying, doggone, I really thought that was going to go a different way. But at the end of the day, as a grown man, I have to believe the Lord is establishing my steps. The Lord is establishing my wallet, my job situation, my hobbies, my my living, wherever. Whatever it is, I have to trust in the Lord. That doesn't mean we don't make plans. It doesn't mean we don't set goals. It doesn't mean we don't have some measurables in our life or things that we're trying to attain or work towards. Those are all good. But there's going to be setbacks. For some guys, you've had a major setback. I know we have when it comes to your retirement and the money that you're putting into these things and you're looking and it just keeps going down. And for a number of people, that is um, that that has caused them to, to take some drastic measures that, that are not good. I have to believe at the end of the day, whether it's God changing my trail plans or my wife and daughter going to Taylor Swift or a job situation or whatever it is, I have to believe, God, you are good and you're in control. And that's what I'm going to take comfort in. Amen. Think about that, guys. Read Proverbs chapter 16, 9. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Thank you for listening to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast. If you would, make sure to visit iTunes and leave a five-star review to let others know what you think of this show. When you get a chance, make sure to visit thepursuitofmanliness.com to see what is available in the gear store, find more information out about Tribe, and much more. Thanks for listening, and let's keep pursuing biblical manliness. Manliness.